One of the foundational concepts in linear algebra is going to be the idea of a vector. So what is a vector? Much like many other parts of linear algebra, we can often conceive of the idea of a vector in a couple different ways, algebraically and geometrically. Algebraically, a vector is just a list of numbers, something like this, 1, 2, 0, 7, who knows. And I'll often come and put round brackets around them, which is the same notation I use for matrices. In other words, when I'm talking about a vector, I'm simply referring to a, a matrix that only has one column. And if I think about this just a, a list of data that I'm trying to encode, it doesn't really matter whether I write it as a column vector or as a row vector, but it is just some list of numbers. So in other words, what we have is going to be an n by one matrix. In this particular case, n is equal to four as I have four different rows. Geometrically, the idea of a vector is going to appear, at least on first glance, to be quite different. Geometrically, a vector is some arrow. It's something that has a length and something that has a direction. It points in some way. So for example, if I tell you to drive, say, north, north, east by one kilometer, that is a vector. I've told you a distance, go one kilometer, and I've told you a direction, go in the north, northeast direction. So this is what a vector geometrically is going to be, a prescription of a direction and a length. One of the interesting things about a vector is that the starting point of your arrow doesn't actually matter. If I think of this as an instruction, like take a step north, then every one of us could all take a step north. The, the fact of where you're starting it doesn't matter. It's an instruction of which direction you're going. So for instance, this vector and this vector and this vector, I claim are all not just slightly different vectors. They are the same vector because all of them have the same instruction to go in the same direction and with the same length. In three dimensions, you can imagine that your arrow looks something like this pen. It's just pointing in some direction with some length in three dimensions. And in four and higher dimensions, it, it might be harder to visualize, but perhaps we can imagine some extension of the same idea of a direction and a length. Now, how do I connect this algebraic notion to this geometric notion? I'm going to put a coordinate system in. And, and I told you that it, it we can imagine our vectors being moving around and they're all the same vector. But I'm going to choose a coordinate system that is locked in for my specific choice of vector. So I'm going to put a coordinate system in, and specifically I'm going to put one in where the origin is that start of the vector. This is the standard way that we use vectors, and the fact that we can move them around as long as we don't change the length and direction, that's fine, but the canonical way to represent it is to put the origin down here at the base. Now, if I've done this, I can come here and I can drop a horizontal, and I have some distance here, which I will call x naught, and I have some distance here, which I'm going to call y naught. And then right out here at the tip, I'm going to have some point. That is just the coordinates of the point. So in other words, this geometric vector that I have, I sort of plop it down in a coordinate system where the origin or the center of that coordinate system is at the base of this vector. And then the tip of the vector is given the, in Cartesian coordinates, the point x0, y0. But then what is this, this coordinate x0, y0? It's just a list of numbers. This coordinate x0, y0 is the same thing as that algebraic vector. I've just written it horizontally opposed to vertically. So in other words, a vector, which is, which is given as a list, say x0, y0, is thought of geometrically as this thing that starts at the origin and goes out and has its the tip of its arrow at the coordinate x0, y0. I could also make sense perhaps now of my, my notion of direction. If I put in a coordinate system, I have a specific angle. I could refer to that as my direction. I could refer down here to the length of that vector. We would have some distance, in this case, by Pythagoras, it is x naught squared plus y naught squared, and I might call that the distance. So when I embed my vector into a coordinate system, we can make some sense of what the direction and what the distance is going to be. 
So let me give one with a, a very specific value. One thing I could imagine is I could imagine this vector that is twice as long as that vector and in the same direction. This is the vector that goes out to the point 6, 2. In other words, what I've done is I've taken the vector 3, 1 and I've multiplied each of its individual components and it becomes a vector that's pointing in the same direction but has twice its length. And I might be tempted to write this. If I take 2 and I multiply it to the vector 3, 1, if I'm going to write it algebraically, I'm going to go back to writing it vertically, then this is going to be equal to the vector 6, 2, and the vector 6, 2 has twice the length of the vector 3, 1. The 2 that I have out the front here, it sort of scales the vector 3, 1 to the vector 6, 2, and so I'm going to refer to it as a scalar. And indeed, the word scalar and the word number are, in, in a sense, interchangeable, at least in our course of linear algebra. So we know that we can take a vector, not change its direction, but I can multiply its length. If I wanted to refer to a vector like, say, this one here, this vector that I'm pointing to there, well, it's in the opposite direction, which is a little bit like multiplying by a minus sign. So I'm going to write a minus, and it looks like maybe half the length, so perhaps I'll write it like this minus one-half times the vector 3, 1. And that's going to be equal to the vector minus three-halves and minus one-half. Notice, by the way, that in a sense I am defining a new type of algebraic operation, an algebraic operation between a scalar and a vector. Indeed, in general, if I took any vector c and I multiplied it by some particular vector, how about the vector x1 all the way down to xn, then what I've done is I've defined, notice I wrote colon equals for a definition, I've defined a notion called scalar multiplication. This is defined to be, I just take that c and I multiply it in front of every single one of these different components, cx1 down to cxn. And this algebraic notion I define corresponds geometrically to the stretching of the vector by the scalar c. I'm also going to have a notion of addition of two vectors. Imagine I have, say, this vector here. So that's the vector 3, 1 again. And then imagine that I additionally have this vector up here. This is going to be the vector 1, 2. Now, the way I want to think about these two things is that the vector 3, 1 is an instruction, go 3 to the right and 1 up. And the vector 1, 2 is the instruction, go 1 to the right and then 2 up. So if I think about combining them, what I'm saying is, is first go 3 to the right and 1 up, and then go 1 to the right and 2 up. And if I put those together, it's a little bit like going 3 plus 1 is 4 to the right, and then 1 plus 2 is 3 up. One way that I can visualize this is, remember how I said that I can take a vector and I can move it around as I, long as I don't change its length or its direction? Well, let's take this vector 1, 2, and I'm going to plug it in over here. So it's the exact same vector, but I've just moved it over. And then what I can think of is, in the middle of these two, this vector that, that connects the other two vectors which are added tip to tail, well, this goes out 3 to the right, comes from the purple vector, and then 1 to the right from this, this greenish vector, that's going to go out to 4 total units to the right. And then since the purple vector was 1 up, and the green vector was 2 up, it's gone up a total of 3 units up, and that's my point 4, 3, and I'm thinking of it as being the 3, 1 plus the 1, 2. Algebraically, what I've effect done is take one vector, which maybe I'll call x1 down to xn, and then I've, I've added to it a different vector, which maybe I'll call y1 down to yn, and then I've defined a notion of addition. And my notion of addition is to add it so-called component-wise, that the first component becomes the sum of the other two first components, and then the final component becomes the sum of the other two final components, and that this is going to be a definition, algebraically, a vector addition. And then we've seen that geometrically it corresponds to this 
tip-to-tail addition of my vectors. And if I think about them both as a set of instructions, it's like you do the one instruction, go three to the right and one up, and then you do the other instruction, go one to the right and two up. One of the nicest things about this geometric picture is that I note that I could also go the other way around. This 3-1 vector, I could also go and put it over there, and I get sort of a parallelogram. But we know if we want to go to the opposing point in a parallelogram, it doesn't matter which path I go. It doesn't matter which side I go around it. I'm going to arrive at the other side of my parallelogram either way. In other words, it didn't matter that I took the 3-1 vector first. I could have just as well gone and taken the 1-2 vector first and then added the 3-1 vector. Geometrically, it doesn't matter. And algebraically, it doesn't matter. Because if I look down here at, at these insides, we know that the sum of two numbers, it commutes. I can write it either way around. And so, therefore, because of this property of the sums of numbers being able to commute, this larger factor of two vectors and the vector addition I define, I can switch around these whole columns and it doesn't affect it as well. So in summary, what we have is this idea of a vector is this list of numbers, that's its algebraic view, or is this geometric vector, that's its geometric view, and that there's two different operations I can do on it. I can multiply it by a scalar and I can add two different vectors together. And in both cases, we have an algebraic view of what those operations do and a geometric view of what those operations do.